Um, and one of the amazing things that you can do is you, if you get the storytelling right, you can ask very searching, very challenging questions. And, yeah. you know, like, uh, who are we? Where are we going? What kind of nation do we want to be? Um, somehow I've become this unofficial ambassador to Poland, is what some people call me. I like to think of myself a bit more as like the court jester. If, if you do get the real ambassadorship, um, I want to guest room in the British, <laughs> in the British embassy because... Uh, Anyway, that would be a fantastic place to have garden parties. <laughs> <laughs> My dear boy, we don't like Americans on our, on our soil. No, uh, we, we, uh, well, yeah, that will probably never happen because I'm trying to do something a little bit different from what's ever been done before. And, um, uh, you know, the reaction is incredible. I've, I've come from 600 Facebook likes 18 months ago to 45,000 right now. Uh, with no paid traffic, zero paid traffic has, has not has not spent a dime or a zwote in Poland here on <laughs> on, on paid traffic, so. um, and that's because on three occasions I've just produced a piece of content that is hit the sweet spot that, that really has got to the psyche of of uh, my viewers and readers, uh, and I've got a challenge now, which I'm doing that from Polish to English, but I'm I'm going off course a little bit. We're going to talk about that, I think, in more detail. If you put British subtitles on that video, English <laughs> subtitles, I think you could just upload that to the same file. You get a lot more views. It, here's the thing: I the stories I tell in Polish are not understandable by English speakers because every single word counts and every single word has this deep mm. history to it. And language is so important. We're going to come back to this. So um, this has been like a, an extraordinary journey in my life in the last 18 months in particular. And I've, I've got some real plans about writing books about Poland, um, recording more films about Poland, uh, showcasing Poland in a way that's never been done before. Um, and it also feels like quite a heavy responsibility now in my life because I've kind of got this mantle of yeah, being people, the guy that does this. People uh, look to you for... And to be honest, I hesitated to record over the last two weeks because I'm scared that the next thing's not going to be good enough. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like a very new stage for me as a storyteller. So we'll, we'll come back to this, but um, this for me is where I'm at right now. But ultimately it comes back to me being a little boy lying in bed all day, reading books <laughs> constantly and just being fascinated by the stories of interesting people. Yeah. And, and it's, that's the, um, you know, Patty and I um, both come at this from, remarkably similar backgrounds of, of growing up reading history. Um, you know, and I also learned speed reading from my father. I've read a lot of books in my life and that's kind of my, my thing is reading and consuming podcasts and synthesizing everything and, and coming up with new and better ideas. But, um, and I, I came to Poland for many of the same reasons. Uh, I was traveling after I left the army. A lot of things kind of converged in my life. Um, right before I um, settled in Poland, my uh, army career ended, although I wanted it to, to end. I'm the one who resigned my commission and wanted to get out. Uh, it still wasn't a great uh, experience getting out, um, go through a little bit of withdrawal, um, identity loss when you are no longer an army officer, which is the most probably respected profession in the U.S., although other countries may be surprised by that in the U.S. They tend to venerate or maybe even over idolize military because of our, let's say, warlike culture and a little bit of survivor's guilt of people who don't go to all these wars that we let our government just frivolously send us to. Um, that was a real identity hit. And then at the, the same time, my little brother passed away. James Cook Media is actually named after my brother who passed away. He was a composer um, and... I've always loved music and grew up loving music and uh, uh, he was a composer and one of the things he was worried about was um, never getting paid for doing what he loved. And uh, the cool part about James Cook Media is I believe that the musical story and if you've listened to our videos really matters. And I have a sound editor and composer who works for us who <laughs> writes the music for all of our videos and our clients uh, videos that we do. So. Um, that's a, a really cool thing for me to communicate through the audio uh, musical channels. Um, probably another reason why I'm doing this podcast and, and love that medium. Yeah, so that's both of our histories or stories. And so that you know, going forward on this podcast, you know, a little bit more about the personality and, and the, the thoughts that are shaping these ideas as you watch the videos and consume our content and, and, and learn our education um, that we put out on storytelling. 
boy, Patty, our histories went way longer than we uh, expected. So <laughs> yeah, they, they did a little bit. And I know Sam, you wanted to talk about five thousand years of storytelling. Yeah, which I don't yeah, think we can do in ten minutes. It actually wasn't the agenda we had for today's um, podcast, but that presents an interesting opportunity um for us to well what should we do now Patty? yeah so that is the question so uh, what are we going to do over the course of these podcasts like why should um the listener who's listening right now tune into the next episode yeah so the story matters podcast is a running conversation on the history and the future of storytelling and bottom line really what we want to do is help you understand the art of storytelling, the ancient timeless art of storytelling, and how to apply it now uh, in the digital age. Because we live and we cling to stories. And I'm gonna go into this in depth in the next episode, uh, where I'm gonna talk about the history uh, and future of storytelling. We live and die by stories. And uh, people fight for stories. Um, entire civilizations have risen and fallen uh, on the quality of their stories. I think when you understand the broader context of story and how it matters in history and how it's affected your life in ways that you don't even know it, um, it will be easier for you to contextualize and understand your role as a business owner or marketer or whatever role you have. If you're not a marketer or not a business owner, but you uh, want to influence people in your professional life, stories matter. 